One of the hardest parts about chapter 9, and chapter 10 and 11 for that matter, is knowing when to do what. There are so many different formulas, so many different things we're being asked to do. How can we tell what path to choose? These flow charts will help us choose the correct path. At least that's the goal. Now, this flow chart is for confidence intervals from chapter 9. So at this point, we only know two different confidence intervals. But how do you know when to use which one and what are the differences? That's the key. All right, so if the instructions tell us that they want us to construct a confidence interval, that means you're going to be choosing one of the two confidence interval options. So if I look at our exam notes packet, which is right here, I have it electronically from the course pack, we can see that we have a confidence interval for proportions and a confidence interval for means. Now technically there are really, it's, it's two sides of the same formula. I tend to use the one that's in the back, the one that's the second one that's written, although the first one is also correct. They're both fine. So if we're going to go with now let's do the proportion one first. So that was p hat plus or minus z alpha over 2 times the square root of p hat times q hat over n. All right, so now that was from section 9.1. Now where to find it will depend on what semester you're watching this in, right? So I'm going to leave the page blank, but you fill it in with the page from your particular yellow packet, your particular exam notes packet. So fill that in. It's the top box on that page. Right, so the current semester I'm making this in, it's page 235, but I can't guarantee it will stay there. So fill this in with your page. All right, now, how are you going to know that that's what you're looking for? Well, because it's going to tell you proportion, or the letter P will be in there, or it'll talk about percents or surveys, right? It'll have words like that. So those are the words you want to look for, proportion, or you want to look for P, or you want to look for um, a percent. By the way, a percent that's not your confidence, right, besides your C level. Right, your confidence level will always be given to you. That's not the same as the percent we want to use. If they're talking about surveys or polls, right, we polled this many people, that is a proportion, right? Surveys and polls are proportions. The parameter we're working with is P, population proportion. That's what P stands for. Now, the technology is also given to us in the yellow packet, in the, in the exam notes packet. It tells us right here. It's stat, proportion stat, one sample with summary. So we're going to write that down. So it's stat, proportion stat. one sample with summary. <laughs> There's an R in there. <laughs> it's got lost with summary. OK. Now the critical values. Well, the critical values are the Z's that you can see inside the formula. It's using the Z curve. So the critical values are the Z values. Right here it says critical values, Z value. So the critical values are the Z's. And then how do you find the critical values? Well, that's what the previous page tells you. It tells you how to find critical Z values right here. Right? So look to, so it's plus or minus Z alpha over 2, right? Look to whatever page that is in your yellow packet, and it will tell you, your, your exam notes packet, it will tell you what they are. I usually have them printed as, in yellow paper. <laughs> so um, it's the top box on page. Now, in my particular semester that I'm making this, it's page 234, but you have to go wherever it's re wherever it is. So um, whatever page that is, put it down for yourself. It's the top box. It's the one that has the Z in giant font. <laughs> Right? So you're looking for the critical Z values. That's how to find them. Now, what about the requirements for normal? Well, because it's for proportions, we learned that in section 8.2, normal is n times p hat times q hat must be greater than 10. So n times p hat times q hat 
must be greater than or equal to 10. Now, the one other thing that can kind of come up is the margin of error. The margin of error is the back half of the formula, right? The way all confidence intervals work, and actually we should kind of put this somewhere. The, the basic formula for all confidence intervals is your point estimate plus or minus your margin of error. It's written right in the exam notes packet right here at the top. Point estimate plus or minus margin of error is your lower plus upper. All right, so I'm going to write that right up here. Confidence interval is your point estimate plus or minus your margin of error. And we write all confidence intervals, parentheses, the lower number, comma, or the upper number, close parentheses. And we can put units in there if units are appropriate. So the error part of it is this back half of this formula. That's the point estimate in the front, plus or minus, that's the margin of error. So if you want the margin of error, the real formula for it, quote unquote, right? that would be the Z alpha over 2 times the square root of p hat times q hat over n. That's the real formula. There's another way to get it that I'll talk about down below that we use a lot, but that's the real formula for it. So this is the error right there. Right. So error is this, right? We use the capital E for error as an abbreviation. All right, now that was one formula. What about the other one? Well, the other one is the one for mean, right? So for population mean mu. Okay, so that would be x bar plus or minus t alpha over 2 times the s over the square root of n. All right, so the parameter we're working with is mu. Right. And so if you see, what is mu? Mu is the mean. So if you see the mean, if you see average, right, those terms, if you see um, standard deviation in the problem, if you have a data table, proportions don't come from data tables. So if you have a data table, if you have data in a table form, that's mean. Okay. The technology, oh, and we can tell the critical values right away. It's the t, plus or minus t alpha over 2, which is on page, it's whatever page it was for the z, but it's the bottom box. Again, the semester I'm doing this, it's page 234, but that will change depending on what semester you watch this in. So critical t values right here, the giant font. Right? So page 234, there's your critical t values. Right there they are and how to find them. Don't forget your degrees of freedom. Don't forget to click between. That's the number one mistake students make. All right, so page whatever that is. This is from section 9.2. And the formula for all of this and is the same place I'm going to go get the technology. For me, it's page 235 right now. But again, that can change for the semester. And the technology piece is stat t stat one sample right there. Sometimes you use with summary, sometimes you use with data. It depends on whether you have the raw data in a column or not. All right, so you're going to fill in your page and then it's the bottom box on that page. And technology is stat, t stat, one sample. And then you're going to either choose with data or with summary, it depends. If you have the data table, you'll get to choose with data. If you don't have a data table, then you can't. Now the requirements for normal can come in a lot of different ways. I can actually just give it to you in the problem. I can say it's normal and then you believe me. Or I can give it to you in a graph. Or I can say n is greater than or equal to 30. The graph is the normal probability plot that we learned about in chapter 7. So for normal, right here, n is greater than 30 or a graph. Or again, technically I can just say it. Of course, I could say it up above. I could say or given right here. It can just be given to you. It can just be stated. You know, it's met. Don't worry about it. 
As for your margin of error on this one, the margin of error is this back half, right? Because it's your point estimate, x bar, plus or minus your margin of error, which I actually should put that in. Margin of error, the real formula for one of these ones. is the t alpha over 2 times s over the square root of n. All right, one more important piece. The point estimate is, this, is the core, the center, right? So this is the point estimate right here. It's the center of our interval. So we want to write that down. Point estimate is p hat. And p hat, we learned in chapter 8, is x over n. It's the number of successes divided by the number of observations. That's your point estimate for this one. Your point estimate for this one down here is x bar, which is the mean. Right? That's the sample mean. We've known how to find that for quite some time. Um, if you have raw data, you find it with page, well, it's, um, it's stat, summary, stat, columns. I don't, again, want to give you page numbers because that changes, but it's method one for how to find mean and standard deviation, wherever that might be. So method from raw data, method one. Again, my current semester, it's page 230, but it's method one. And let me label that point estimate right there. Now, all of this is actually kind of on the yellow packet. If you look at your, your exam notes packet, the, a lot of the information I'm giving you in this flow chart is here. It's just written in a different way. Right, so the point estimates right here, the critical z values right here, etc. So it has a lot of the information, but I'm just kind of writing it in a different way to help you. The key is what to look for, right? How are you going to know that it's a mean problem, an average problem, versus a proportion problem? Right? That's how you're going to know, right? It's the words that are used in the problem.